So today we're going to be looking at GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, and it's a great photo editing application. It's open source, it's cross-platform, so you can get it on PC, Mac, and Linux, and it's great for editing photos. And what I mean by when I say editing photos or photo editing, it's basically the process of changing images, whether they're digital photographs, illustrations, or even scanned photos. The process of changing those photos and, you know, maybe uh, removing red eye, uh, someone's eyes that seem red in a photo, getting rid of that, that would be a form of photo editing all the way to changing, say, the background of an image. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities in the realm of photo editing. And I like GIMP because it's a free, like I said, open source application. And this is what it looks like when you download and install the um, program. Now, actually, there's one thing that I would recommend doing to get it to look exactly like it looks on this screen here. And that is when you open the program, go ahead and go to the Windows tab and click on single window mode and that 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 takes it from a series of of windows that are kind of you know floating around your screen to one solid um, application that you can work with and I, I find that that works a lot better uh, for me personally and anyone that's used to Photoshop um, will will feel um, at least initially comfortable with um, with GIMP and its layout because uh, essentially that's what it's mimicking and um, yeah by the way this is a great way um, if you can't afford the um, Photoshop the current version of Photoshop um, like most of us can't um, GIMP is a great way to um, to achieve that achieve the um, the uh, abilities of Photoshop without having to pay a dime okay so Right off the bat, like I said, this is going to be your window once you change it to single window mode. And let's go ahead and open up a, a picture into the program just to show you how, well, you know, what, it, what, um, what it's like to work with photos. Um, so let's see, I, I got some sample photos in here. Um, let's go ahead and, yeah, let's open up. There's a man walking in fog. I'm just going to click on the photo and click open. Um, and the photo is inserted into the, the program. So if I want to zoom in and out of this photo, what you can do is, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can either click the, the tab down here, which allows you to change the percentage of, of, uh, of how you're viewing it. Um, you see I'm at 50, um, at 100, I'm zoomed up 100%. I could go back to 12.5% and zoom out a little bit. But I find it easier to just hold control and zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. So if you hold control and move the uh, scroll the mouse wheel forwards and backwards, you're going to zoom in and out of the picture. <clears throat> and that's a lot easier. In Photoshop, you hold Alt and, and zoom the mouse wheel. In, in GIMP, you hold control. So let's see. Um, Let's go ahead and um, what I like to do when I'm editing a photo is I like to make a duplicate of the layer right off the bat. And um, like Photoshop, GIMP works with layers. Um, if, if you look over on the side here, I'm going to right click on the, the layer. There's only one layer and the layer is the image that we inserted. <clears throat> I'm going to right click on that and click duplicate layer. And you can see now I have two layers, guy and fog, guy and fog, copy essentially, that's what it says. Drag this over so you can see. Um, and this eyeball here is going to show or hide the layer. So you can see um, if, I, if I get rid of the top layer, if I hide it and I hide the bottom layer, you get nothing. You get this checkerboard background. And so <clears throat> I'll leave the, the bottom layer uh, hidden and I will go ahead and keep the the, the next layer shown and, and it, it's a tier system where the highest layer over here is going to be the, the closest um, layer to the screen to the user um, that's how it works it's, it's a top-down hierarchy um, basically 
with the layer that's up top over here is going to be the one that is the 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 closest to the foreground um, of all of all the layers. <clears throat> so let's see. What do we want to do? Let's go ahead and let's erase the the area around this guy. And to do that, first you have to add an alpha channel. And this is important. I wish I knew this when I started using GIMP. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to go up to Layer, click on Transparency, and add an al alpha channel. And what that does is allows you to erase parts of this layer and and uh, essentially hide it from view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the eraser tool and I'm going to select the brush that I want. Right now it's set to, it's not even set to a brush. Uh, I'm going to do that by clicking up here where it says brush. And let's go ahead, I'm just going to select, select the generic circle one. And you can see I have this, this circle eraser. And what I can do is I can, if I click and drag, I can just start erasing the background. Now, I don't want to erase the guy. Um, I would like to um, erase everything but the man in the picture. So I'm going to hold control and zoom up. And I can start erasing. Now you can see the eraser is rather large. To change the size of it, you can just drag the size over here um, down. You could even type it in manually if you wanted to, but um, this is a smaller eraser, makes it easier to use. Um, it's also a fine time to show you the magic wand tool. Um, actually, they call it the fuzzy select tool. It's essentially the magic wand tool from Photoshop. You click on that, and it makes <clears throat> getting rid of parts of an image a lot easier because it basically selects similar um, uh similar pixels essentially the the entire picture is made up of small little pixels and the the fuzzy image tool fuzzy what do they call it the fuzzy fuzzy select tool uh, just selects similar pixels so it makes it a lot easier so what you can do is just say click on the side of of the man here and I'll include the photos in the description if you want to work with these direct photos and I'm just gonna push the delete key on the keyboard Okay, and using that, it makes it a lot easier. So I can just go around. Um, see, it is. See, if you look here, I selected right here, and it it selected his hand as well. You can lower the the threshold, which basically lowers the um, the mount that's going to be selected. It's going to be more picky about the pixels that are similar. Go ahead and delete that, um, and see now it doesn't uh, take his hand when I select over here. Um, so I'm just going to select all around him. And just hit the delete key. And even in between his legs here, select that and delete it. This grass. Um, it gets a little trickier down by the grass because these pixels are so, are so different. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the erase tool. And um, oh, you see, I can't erase right now because things are still selected. To deselect everything on the screen, you go ahead and you click on the select menu up here and just click none. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this or erase all of that rather and erase all around here scroll up a little bit and that looks pretty good now to get rid of the rest of the image I'm gonna zoom up um, it would take forever to just you know sit here and erase all that so what I'm gonna do is just bring the size of the brush over here to a larger brush size and now I can just kind of erase everything and and there'll be nothing left except the man and the blue jacket and then we can start to have fun we can put him in different places um, depending on what what we want to put behind him so to do that um, I find that the easiest way to, to copy an image into the program is to just go to the file, find the actual file in your computer, the, the, the photo that you have, and just drag it in. So um, I'm going to take this, this um, 
this folder over here kind of make it small and well we could have him on water if we wanted to we could have him in a field let's let's put him on this lawn over here so I'm gonna take this picture it's a file that I have in my computer drag it over to GIMP and drop it and you can see it it, it puts it right in the um, program itself now you can see that this lawn is small it's 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 it doesn't even fit in the canvas size here by the way this whole area that we're working in this square this workspace this is the canvas and that's all determined uh, when you open the program now I opened the the photo with the man in the blue uh, jacket and the size of that photo set the canvas size but you can select it all um, when you're opening uh, a project if you hit file new you can see you can select the width and the height of the height of the image or canvas and you know when you're making the program and it's even got some templates here you could use like the size of a uh, standard piece of US paper um, let's go ahead and hit cancel but if I want to make this uh, this layer bigger what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on the scale tool over here and when you click on the scale tool you want to make sure that you're on the layer that you want to scale in this case it's the lawn layer and just to show you guys I can actually drag this layer down behind uh, under the guy in the fog and you can see now now the guy in the fog or the yeah the guy in the fog the guy in the blue jacket is in front of the lawn because he's above the lawn in this in this hierarchy um, in this layer hierarchy but um, anyway so to make the lawn bigger click the scale tool click on the layer in question make sure you clicked on the lawn and you can change the width and height of the scale over here if you wanted to but what I like to do is hold control to keep your proportions and just go to the image itself drag this out of the way hold control and just drag the corner of of the um, of the layer and if you want to move it you can click on the center here and pull it around well, you can see it's still smaller than the canvas so I'm gonna hold control and make it just a little bit bigger that's good so now now it's it's um, oh, I'm gonna, oh I, I lost the proportion that's okay I'm just gonna keep plowing through um, I'm gonna hold control it's still pretty aligned and get this right in the center and then just hit scale and you can see it's gonna work a little bit it's gonna scale that layer and now it's nice and big and I'm not sure why, but it put the lawn above the, the guy in the blue jacket over here in the layer. So I'm just going to drag that back down. So now the guy that used to be in fog is now <laughs> walking in a lawn without feet. His feet were in the grass, if you remember. Now, I can move the guy in the, frog, in the fog around wherever I want. Um, you can use the move tool over here and actually just click on the man kind of move him around I could have him standing on the trees over here he looks huge um, but let's see and I, I'm not a big fan of how his feet are hidden so we can work on that maybe we want to put something in front of this guy let's go ahead and insert another photo um, what can we put in front of him all I have here is a uh, big feline I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in so now I have a cat um, I could have the cat running in front of him if I wanted to. Yeah, let's do that. So, just like I did with the guy in the fog before, I want to erase all the area around this cat. Um, let's go ahead and erase. Oh, if you remember, I made the brush size very big for the eraser. I'm going to go ahead and drag this way down. Drag it. Okay, that's too small. I want it. I, I'll get it to be about 68. That's good. And I'm just going to race around him. And why is it not showing the background? Probably because I have to add the um, alpha channel again. So I'm going to click on layer, transparency, add alpha channel. And maybe now when I erase. There we go. Now when I erase. It's going to hide everything behind. Um, let's go ahead and use the the fuzzy select tool. 
Um, if you remember, I lowered the threshold. I'm going to actually up the threshold a little bit so it selects more um, when I'm clicking that. And just hit delete. And look at that. It gets pretty much the whole background there. Um, makes it a lot easier to get rid of um, parts of an image. Uh, let's go down here. No, nope, see, that's too much. Uh, that's pretty good. And let's find tune everything by the way I'm gonna deselect by clicking select none and you can see I have a lot of leftover pieces here I'm just gonna clean those up with the eraser tool oh got his ear oh by the way to, um, if you look what I just did was I um, made a mistake I erased off his ear or her ear what I want to do is click edit undo or you can hold control and push Z and that'll that'll undo the last action that you took on the um, program so let's go ahead I'm gonna drag this down and I'm just gonna erase all the the miscellaneous things that I didn't take care of with the fuzzy select tool and almost done here and we'll have the the cat here running in front of the man and that hides his feet that takes care of that In theory, you could you could pull in um, uh, shoes from another picture, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, you can see I'm trying to erase some of these parts, and I'm like it won't erase. I can't erase this this little speck down here. That's because that's not on this layer. I can only uh, change the layer that I'm working on. So if I want to get rid of that speck, it looks like it's a part of this guy in fog layer. So I'm going to click on the guy in fog layer, and then I can erase the stuff that. You can, that kind of stands out and notice how I can't now I can't touch the cat um, and now I want to erase that and I can't so I'm gonna go back to the cat there you go all right so let's zoom out <clears throat> and so this is a pretty random <laughs> photo you have a guy walking on a lawn kind of looking over here and a cat that's running in front of him um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it's kind of funny um, I can move I can move the guy around I can move the cat around here Let's, let's move the cat down just a little bit. Now, if I wanted to change the color or change the brightness and contrast of any of these layers, what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on the colors menu up here, and you can change the, the hue and the saturation. Um, and just go back. You can see there's all kinds of different um, uh, uh, changes you can make to the color. I'm going to change the hue. Um, this is basically the color of the of the cat I'm gonna try and make it blend in you can change the lightness of it let's see it looks like it's in the shadow in the shade a little bit so I'll lower it uh, maybe I'll, I'll keep the hue the same um, that's just gonna change the color of it and saturation again I'm just all I'm doing is making this I'm trying to get this to blend into the background more so I can change the saturation yeah it looks like it's it's more saturated it blends in more with like um, the grass here the grass seems pretty saturated um, and with a with a darker look because it's kind of like a, a, sh a shady area over there. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, what else can we do? Brightness and contrast. <clears throat> I can up the brightness, maybe even lower the brightness. That looks good. And I can change the contrast a little bit, just try and get it to blend the best I can. And that looks, that looks decent. The cat kind of looks like it's actually there. Um, I can also add effects if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that right now, but if you want to add different filters, you can go ahead and click on filters, and you could, you, you know, for example, you can make it look like you know the cat's behind glass or something, um, which you might find useful in your projects. But um, all your filters and effects are going to be over here. You can make it look cartoony with under the artistic tab, and. And yeah, okay, so that's about it. I could do the same thing to the guy. I could, I could go, I could click on the guy layer, the guy in fog, click on color, um, and make him a little lighter because he seems very dark. But let's try and get him to blend in a little bit. Um, he might have too much saturation. Let's let's pull some saturation off. I don't want to make him look black and white. That looks that looks good. A um, little less saturation. Um, and actually, since it's like I said, like with the cat, it's a shady area. Let's just leave him, leave him dark, cause that that kind of fits in. Now, this is by no means a perfect photo, but you could, you know, if you didn't know it was Photoshop, you might, you might, 
buy that, that, that this actually happened. And this is a photo of this event. But um, I just want to show you a couple other things just to get you up and running with GIMP. Um, you're going to want a, uh, if you want to add text, it's like your standard um, uh, text in other programs. You're going to go ahead and click on the text tool. And before I even pull it in, I'm going to go ahead and change the font size to something big, like 40. Um, you can change the font, how it looks. Um, let's get, uh, I, I kind of like this, wide Latin, ultra expanded. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click up here and type Austin's, oh, Austin's text. And it looks tiny. So if I want to make it bigger, what you can do is select all the text, just hold control and push A, and you could crank up the, the pixel size over here. Um, that, that's a good size. Um, and it looks like it started to overlap into the next line once, once it hit the end here. So I'm going to drag one of the corners and make it bigger. Um, and I spelt it wrong. I spelt my own name wrong. A-U-S-T-I-N. And that's that. So just going to click on a different tool and you can see it added a new layer for the text over here so um, I can move the, the layer around just like any other layer Oop! it moved the wrong layer I want to click on text and make sure I'm clicked right on the text itself and then I can drag this over here I could even drag it oh, keep grabbing the wrong thing I'm gonna go edit undo click on the text click on the actual text and I'll bring it down here you might not even have to click the layer first um, it looks like if you if you with the move tool you can just drag anything that's clicked. So if I click the background, I can move it. Um, if I want to move the cat, I can just click right on the cat and move that. I could have the cat jumping over the text. Um, uh, let's see. If I want to move this text, um, you can see that the, the Austin's text is behind the cat, but in front of the man, and that's because. It, uh, of its place in the layer over here. If I want it in front of the cat, I could drag the layer up, and then it's in front. I kind of like it behind, and that the the cat. The, I like the text being between the uh, cat and the man. Um, let's put it right down there. You can kind of see it. And and as a final tool, I'm just going to show you the what do they call it? They call it the clone tool. Okay, just like Photoshop, the clone tool allows you to fill in. Um, parts of a photo using other parts of the photo as a reference and what I'm going to do is hold control and set a reference point for when I'm working with the trees over here so I'm going to click up here that's kind of far away because essentially what I'm going to do is use this point up here to copy that information over here in a realistic way at least uh, somewhat realistic more realistic than if you just copy and pasted um, a square over here um, so like I said, I hold control and you set a reference point by clicking and then you can see it leaves a little circle there. So when I draw over here, by the way, you want to make sure that you're selected on the layer you're working on. I'm working on the lawn layer. Um, now when I draw over here, if you look, both circles are moving in unison because essentially it's just copying over that information. Um, but in a realistic way because it's copying the the sky. Um, now that that looks, it's it looks pretty far off. I won't want to to select a closer reference point. So let's go ahead and hit edit, undo clone. Um, let's set a different reference point somewhere that's kind of closer, maybe closer to the tree line, or maybe up here. That looks closer to how it would be down here. And now when I draw, it's kind of close. Maybe I'll go over here. And you can see if you just keep changing the reference point, you can get it to look somewhat realistic. Um, kind of hard to do clouds. Um, let's go down here. Let's try and get the tree line here. Let's go right up the tree line, just like the one down there. Oh, maybe I can literally use the tree line over here. If I go... You see, I'm, I'm just using the tree line down here to create a tree line up here. Um, and that looks good. I could actually use the tree line up here and come down over here. Oh. 
<laughs> that doesn't look the greatest. Let's go ahead and edit, undo that. Um, but you get what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to use the reference point of other parts in the photo to um, essentially get rid of um, parts of the photo uh, by referencing other parts of the photo. Sorry for that explanation. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and use some of this down here. Um, you get what I'm trying to do. It doesn't look the best, but you get the point, hopefully, that um, I'm using other parts of the photo to change. Um, I'm using other parts of the photo as a reference to change parts of the photo that I want to change. And, um, yeah, so that's just the basic rundown of GIMP. Um, hopefully, I gave you enough to where you you can um, use the program and, you know, play around with some of the other tools. But that's the very basics of GIMP. And, like I said, it's a great program. Um, if you don't feel like shelling out that money for Photoshop, I would highly recommend uh, GIMP. Again, it stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, and I'll include the link in the description. So thanks for watching.